welcome back to Hockey Eastern Ontario's Rule of the Week, where each week we take a rule from the Hockey Canada Rulebook and break it down so that our officials, our coaches, and our players can better understand the rule and how it's applied in a game situation. I am super excited about this Rule of the Week because it will allow me to do my best West Macaulay impression. So you ready? <clears throat> this week, the Rule of the Week is... Both guys, five minutes each for fighting! Why, why would you do that? Why would you steal my thunder like that? I mean, I, I, you know, I've been working on my West Macaulay impression for a while, and it's, it's really good. Oh, all right. This week's rule of the week is uh, fighting. Just roll the intro. No, me be professional. How about you be professional? You know, West Macaulay. Really? You need it? I I do a better West Macaulay than West Macaulay. All right, fine. Fine, you know what, let's just... Where we got the perfect rule of the week. All right, so back. We're here to talk a little bit this week about fighting, what the penalty options are for that, and some other penalties that can often go along when we see fighting majors calls in games. So let's uh, let's jump right into it. Okay, so rule 7.10 in the Hockey Canada rulebook is on fighting. So what is a fight? A fight will be deemed to have occurred when at least one player punches or attempts to punch an opponent repeatedly, or when two players wrestle in such a manner as to make it difficult for the lines persons to intervene and separate the combatants. An altercation is a situation involving at least two players with at least one player to be penalized. So a couple of things to remember here. When a fight occurs, all other players must immediately return to the respective players' benches. Any players who do not do so or become involved in a secondary fight will receive additional penalties. The referees are provided a very wide latitude in penalties that they may impose under this rule, and this is done intentionally to enable them to differentiate between the obvious degrees of responsibility of the participants, either for starting or continuing the fight. However, this discretion should be exercised rationally. So what are the penalty options for a fight? Well, it's pretty straightforward. There is no minor penalty for fighting, okay? It's an automatic five-minute major and a game misconduct penalty. Any player who's assessed to have uh, been in a fight and who fights an opposing player. In addition to any other penalties they may incur, a match penalty will be assessed to any player wearing a ring or rings tape or other material on their hands who become involved in a fight and who uses such to gain advantage or to inflict punishment or injury. There must be a fight in order for this rule to apply. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of other situations that occur. A goaltender leaving the crease during a fight. What happens to the third player involved in a fight? What happens when players are refusing to return to their players bench? And what happens to players who get involved in a second fight at the same stoppage of play? So the first situation, when a goaltender leaves his or her crease without permission. So a goaltender has to stay in their crease. If they leave their crease for any reason during a fight, there will be assessed a minor penalty for leaving the crease. And that's actually how it's recorded on the official game report. So it doesn't matter if they get in a fight or get involved in a fight. Those are other penalties that can be assessed as well. But the act of simply leaving the crease is a minor penalty. If there's a fight that's occurring around the crease area, it is perfectly appropriate for an official to give that goaltender permission to go to his or her player's bench. Okay, so number two, what happens when a third player becomes involved in a fight? So unfortunately, this situation happens a lot. Another player will jump into a fight, sometimes just to pull their own player out of the fight. You can't do this as a player, okay? Leave it to the lines persons to break up and deal with uh, players involved in the fighting situation. Any player who gets involved in a fight, even if you're acting as a peacemaker, will be assessed a game misconduct penalty just for being involved in the fight in any way. So for players, if you have two players involved in a fight, stay out of it. Let the lines persons handle it so you can avoid getting the extra penalty. Number three, players refusing to return to their player's bench. So this is another one that happens far too frequently. If there is a fight, all players not engaged in the fight must immediately return to their bench or to a neutral area if the fight is occurring in front of the benches. 
Okay, failure to do so will mean that each of those players who are standing around, even if they're just watching, will be assessed misconduct penalties. It is incumbent on the referee when a fight breaks out to tell all the players immediately, go to your benches, go to your benches. Any player that refuses to do so, you should be jotting down a misconduct penalty for each of those players. And finally, what happens when a player becomes involved in a second fight during the same stoppage of play? So when a player is involved in a second fight in the same stoppage of play, meaning that they've been fighting with one player, they leave that fight and they get involved in another fight with a different player, they will be assessed an additional game misconduct for being involved in that fight. So they would be assessed a five minute major in a game misconduct for the first fight, a five minute major in a game misconduct for the second fight, and then they would be assessed an additional game misconduct for being involved in a second fight during the same stoppage of play. Thanks for tuning in this week. Just a couple of things before we go. If you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to me. You can leave a comment below. You can also send me an email at the email address below. You can also contact the referee in chief of Hockey Eastern Ontario. His name is John Reed. His contact information is below as well. You can also reach out to your association president, your local referee in chief, your district referee in chief, your district chair, Anyone out there that's uh, happy to answer questions about the game that we all love. Please don't forget to like this video if you like the content here and subscribe to the channel. We have weekly updates on our Rule of the Week series as well as other content that we put here uh, on officiating and about the game of hockey. So please go ahead and uh, you like that video and you can also subscribe in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. Until next week, have a safe and wonderful week. Please don't get any too any uh, you know fighting. No, all right. See you real soon.